Hello, everybody. My name is Jerome Douglas. I am a member here at CTPC. Uh, my wife and I, we've been attending for about a year now. Uh, we've been members for, I think, about six, eight months since the beginning of the year. So eight months. Um, it's been good, man. You guys have been a blessing to us. So we're grateful to be here. I'm also a student at Reformed Theological Seminary pursuing my master's in divinity. So I get a privilege and opportunity to serve you guys also as a intern. Um, one of the two interns here at CCPC. So happy, really happy about that. Um, and today, I just wanted to take some time to do a devotion with you guys as we aren't worshiping right now uh, because of the weather. So uh, right now we're just at home. So if you have power, if you even have internet to even watch this, um, I want to take the next few minutes just to reflect on some of the most encouraging, most impactful things that's come out of the sermons Rob has given over the past few weeks on our mission statement. Um, simply put, our mission statement is to exalt Christ, grow in Christ, and share Christ. Um, so before I get into uh, just a quick devotion, it's not going to take long, uh, I just want to pray and ask God to bless our time. Father, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for this time. Thank you for being our God, who's the creator and sustainer of all things. I pray that you will bless our very short time today. Um, keep everyone safe. Um, I pray against Satan and his attempts to steal, kill, and destroy our faith. I pray that we not only hear your word, but we do it. Would you bless us with that? Help me, Lord, to be an encouragement uh, or to be encouraging, um, to bless your people. Um, help me to decrease while you increase. To you be the glory. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so some of you guys know this, some of you don't, uh, but my wife and I, we just bought our first house. This is big news because I'm, I think I'm the first person in my family to actually buy a house outright. But anyways, uh, we just bought our first house here in West Hartford, Connecticut, uh, because we're having um, someone new join our family. Uh, we're, having, we're expecting our first baby girl any moment, any moment now, by the way. So if I have to just drop this and leave, you know why, because my wife is, <laughs> she's about to give birth any moment now. Um, so we're, we're blessed to have her. Uh, and as we, you know, we bought this house and, you know, we, we were thinking like, man, how, how can we get it, you know, nice in, in the way that we really want it? And one of those things was, um, you know, updating our lawn. It was just, in a, it was just a shambles. It was, just, it was a mess. Uh, and so we hired a landscaper to not only do our grass, but to give us a nice flower bed and all the other cool things that come with having a nice lawn done by a professional. Uh, so, my wife is a physician, and I work from home now due to the pandemic. And so with all these different updates that we're doing to the yard, you know, I'm the one in charge of maintenance. <laughs> um, I'm the one who's in charge of making sure that this is kept well, it looks good, you know, outside of the times that our landscaper comes by and helps us like motor lawn, things like that. Uh, and so I remember when our landscaper was um, putting in our flower bed, and he was, you know, doing like the mulch and things like that. Um, don't laugh at me, but I, I asked him a, a really crazy question. I'm like, do I have to water this? <laughs> do I have to water these plants? I mean, that you're putting in. And um, and I know you guys are probably laughing at me. That's cool. But honestly, part of me was like, I hope he says no, because I really don't want to water plants. <laughs> um, and part of me, really, I really just didn't know if you needed to water plants. Uh, I just thought that they just magically grew on their own from like the rain. I don't know. Uh, but of course, like you guys, are, especially all the, I'm, I'm pretty sure all the good plants is out there that, you know, the, the plant mom and plant dads, you guys are probably like, duh. And that's pretty, what, pretty much what my landscaper said. He was like, yeah, of course, you got to water your plants. Um, if you don't water your plants, they won't grow. No water, no growth. Um, and interesting enough, you know, this is exactly what Rob was getting at last week in our, um, in the sermon, or centered around growing in Christ, except we are the plants and Christ is the water. Uh, Rob said that we cannot grow. In fact, we will, not, we will not grow apart from our union with Christ. Therefore, Rob reminded us that our life at CCPC, our very existence, rests on our union with Christ Jesus. It's not about what we do, but what Christ has done. He has knitted us together and declares, you are mine. So, Maybe some of you are probably asking yourselves, like, am I, am I his? Like, do I belong to Christ? Am I a part of this union you're talking about? 
And I just want to, I want to help you get there. I want to help you understand what this all means. But first, let me say this. If God has made you keenly aware of your sin and the gap that was caused between you, because of your sin between you and him, and how by your sin you were God's enemy who deserved wrath, not mercy, curses, not blessings, death, not life, how you are unholy and unable to approach God. And yet, by his good mercy and his love for us, he sent his son Jesus to reconcile himself back into us, to give us mercy, to give us blessings, to give us life. And if not only God has blessed you with understanding these truths, but also the faith to believe that it's true, so that now Jesus Christ is your savior and that his spirit is living in you and bearing fruit, then guess what? You're united to him. And this union has many implications. It means that we put to death that old life that we had where we were serving ourselves and other things. It means that we are beneficiaries of all of Christ's blessings and God's promises. It means that we are citizens of heaven, that our, our real citizenship, our real home is not here on earth. It means that we've, that we've inherited eternal life. And that can't be taken away from us, that that belongs to us in Christ Jesus. It means that we are now called to live like Christ, and God, through his spirit, is sanctifying us to reflect his image daily. It means that God is working all things out for his glory, our good, and for our salvation. It means that God has declared us righteous despite our sin, despite our falling short of that glory. It means that before the foundations of the world, before you were even thought of, God said, you are mine. So for a moment, though, I, I do want to just reflect on that last statement. I do want that to sink in for a second. You are mine. So if you're watching this and um, maybe you're listening to this, um, I'm not sure how, how you're receiving this right now, but Maybe, maybe it might be good just to say this out loud to yourself. Christ says, you are mine. You are mine. I think this is a good practice for us. Because life can get so hectic and so busy. We're moving so fast. That's America, right? I mean, America, we just... We go, we got a schedule. We got to get up at a certain time. We got to be at work at a certain time. You got to drop the kids off at a certain time. Your show comes on at a certain time. And, you know, we got to get on social media and you got to swipe. You got to swipe. You got to go. You got to press. You got to move. You got to jump. You got to, we're just so busy. And we don't get a chance to just sit down and just think, what does all this mean? And what are the implications? So for a moment, let's just, pause and just say it. Christ says you are mine let this be our prayer God our father thank you that through your son Jesus Christ you declare that I am yours you are mine let that be our prayer let it also be a reminder for us in times where we're tempted and it's trouble and we're confused. No, I won't give up. I won't give in to that thing. I no longer belong to that, that, that sin or that person or that pursuit. No, I belong to Christ for he says, you are mine. Let it be our motivation that God preserves us and he promises to preserve us to the end, that God strengthens us to not only embrace the mission he's given us individually, but also this mission he's given us to our church, that God will help us fight sin and doubt because why? Christ says, you are mine. Let it be our aim that as we look to the hills from where our help comes from, as we fix our eyes on the author and finisher of our faith, we know that these things are even possible. Why? Because Christ says, you are mine. Let it be our only comfort. I know we, we, we often 
um, say the first question to the Heidelberg Catechism. And it's one of my favorite things to say and to reflect on because it's so true and it's, and it's gripping and it's a, it's a good reflection for us. In life and in death, I am not my own, but belong body and soul and life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because he says, you are mine. So when God says that you are mine, when he, when he says that to us and we, and we get a chance to hear it and we think about it, we reflect on it, we meditate on it day and night if we can, here's what he's saying. He's saying, one, you're under my sovereign care. You're under my sovereign care. He's saying, two, that you're under my covenant love, which is unconditional, that's never changing, that is here to stay that cannot be separated from you, no matter what goes on. That we're under his mighty protection, that no matter which, what darts that Satan throws at us or the temptations we face in our own flesh and desires, God is protecting us because, why? we are his. We're under God's faithful promises. That when he says that we have an inheritance that is in heaven waiting for us, that nothing can steal from us, nothing can take it away from us. When God says that I am working all things out for my good and for, and for your good and for my glory. When he says those things, he's saying you are mine. It's a reflection of that. It also means that we are under God's holy calling. That being, being God's mean, mean that we, we got to do something that, 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 that impacts how we live. We live as someone who belongs to Jesus Christ. We are his. It also means that we belong to his body. And this is honestly uh, one of my favorite, most favorite aspects of the faith, honestly. Um, growing up for me, it, it was challenging uh, because, you know, my family, we were separated for various reasons. And we just didn't have the opportunity to really be connected. Uh, my mom is always fighting for us to, you know, relive some of those moments where we were able to be under the same household and actually feel like a family. Um, and, and so over our lives, we were just between D.C. and Maryland. And, you know, and, and it, just, it just was difficult for us to really live out what it really meant to be a family. Um, and so for me, I, if I'm honest, I really didn't get a chance to um, really, really experience um, real family, honestly, um, and since I was a kid. Um, but when I, when I got a chance to read God's word, when I became a Christian and I, I came across but many of us have come to understand that we are his and to belong to him means to belong to his people. This was a tremendous blessing for me. I mean, it really blessed my soul that when I come to CCPC week in and week out, I can echo the words of our Lord and Savior that, hey, here, these are my mothers. These are my brothers. These are my sisters. That my family has has gone from my our little immediate circle of, of six in, in a house or that was just dispersed all over DC and Maryland. So now I can say, man, when I'm when I'm in Connecticut, when I'm in uh, when I'm in DC, when I'm in New York, when I'm in Africa, when I'm in Europe, when I'm in any place across the world and there's a group of believers, those are my family. Why? Because I belong to Christ, they belong to Christ, we belong to him and we belong to each other, a part of Christ's body. So when God says that we are his, we, we, we got to come to understand this and, and, and embrace this. So while you're all at home and, you know, you're under, you know, your safety and you're trying to stay protected from the crazy weather, out there, assuming that it does, because I recorded this a day before, but assuming it's actually raining and there's a real storm going on, uh, whatever the circumstances are, may be, uh, I, I, I would like for you to just consider that. Consider your union with Christ Jesus. Consider the fact that he looked at you before you did anything right or wrong. He said, you are mine. And I pray that you will, able, you, you will be able to find hope and joy and comfort in the fact that you belong to Christ Jesus. I am, I am actively fighting for this. I'm actively pursuing more comfort, more joy, more hope in the fact that Christ is mine and I belong to him. And not only that, we belong to each other. 
So as we, as we continue to work through our mission statement as a church, I pray that you will find this to be an encouragement because this very statement, this very reality is the launching pad for everything that we do. The mere fact that we are united to Christ Jesus empowers us to do things like grow together in Christ. Like we cannot grow together unless we have water or unless we have Christ Jesus, unless we consider the union we have with Christ and his body. So let's pray. Father, thank you for calling us yours. Thank you that we are not left to our own devices, that we no longer belong to our old ways, our old selves that were detrimental, that was leading us down a path that was going to end in our damnation. Except, Lord, you, you found us, you've cleansed us, you've declared us righteous, you've created a people for yourself, and we get a chance to be a part of that. We get a chance to say, Christ says, you are mine. So will you help us to remember that, to reflect on that, to meditate on that? Be near all of us as we are, trying to stay safe or even relax and rest today. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hopefully you guys were blessed and encouraged by that. Um, feel free to reach out to me um, if you have any questions about anything I said or you want to just chat and share how this was encouraging to you. Um, love you guys. Peace.